All right, so we're looking to knit together what's going on in this Introduction to Macroeconomics section. So I've arranged it in a series of questions, answers, and tools. The first question, really, the overarching question, is what explains the fluctuations in GDP, unemployment, and inflation? And, of course, how do we measure them? So Chapter 7 gets into this measurement um, GDP of, and CPI. Right, so tracking production, tracking overall price level. The tools in that chapter are the GDP calculation, which we've been over, and the CPI calculation. Inflation is found as the percent change in the CPI from year to year. And then moving on to unemployment and inflation, in chapter 8 we look at how is unemployment calculated, and specifically what kinds of unemployment are there because some of them uh, will be sensitive to government policy and can be reduced and some cannot. And then why should we care about inflation? So understanding inflation just a little bit more. We talked about the different costs of inflation, who might be hurt and helped with inflation. So we're understanding the measurement but also the sort of harm done by unemployment and inflation. So we looked at the types of unemployment, the costs of inflation, the tools in the chapter, Chapter 8, Unemployment Calculation, um, and then the, the characterization of the different types of unemployment, and then the calculation of the real interest rate, which is always just found by subtracting inflation from the nominal interest rate. And that equation can be rearranged. And then listing the three costs of inflation. And then in our march towards understanding the movement and the different key variables in the economy, interest rate is a pretty key variable. So how does it get determined? Well, supply and demand primarily determined interest rate. So there are a couple different models that we'll look at, but the first model here is the loanable funds model, which simply looks at the supply and the demand for interest rate as a way to figure out what equilibrium interest rates are going to be. And so supply or demand can shift out um, and change the interest rate and affect the amount of spending that gets done in the economy. Thinking always of interest rate as um, an important cost of borrowing. So the crowding out effect is where uh, the government increases its borrowing and therefore needs to demand loans. So the demand for loans increases when the government runs a higher deficit and this will mean that there's more um, being more demand for a for the economy's loanable funds, which pushes up the price of those loans, and we find the interest rate rises. And then there's the Fisher effect, which, if you remember, is uh, talking about how real interest rates are unchanged with inflation. So inflation, as long as it's reflected and people are are allowed to adjust in time, um, there will be no real impact on interest rates, at least real interest rates, because everybody just adjusts upward. And finally, putting this all together, we need to start building a full model. So this is our first toy model of the economy um, that helps understand the fluctuations. So what affects total spending? We're going to focus on the spending side because that uh, is the mainstream sort of explanation for what causes fluctuations is that it's fluctuations in spending. So the income expenditure model is what we did and it is holding interest rates and prices constant for now which is an important simplification and assumption. Um, the when, Where we go next we're going to re, um, eliminate those assumptions and allow prices and interest rates to fluctuate but for now we're just looking at a more simple a relationship between income and spending. So the Keynesian cross, the aggregate expenditure model, uh, we looked at consumption and investment as determined by income and the MPC is the slope of that line. And then we looked at the spending multiplier is a tool that we can use here. So the two tools are um, visually representing where the economy comes to rest, right? Where the aggregate expenditure line crosses the 45 degree line and then the spending multiplier um, if there's an increase in 
uh, spending, what does that affect? Um, and so we're going to see that it's a much larger effect in overall spending because one person's income is another person's, um, or rather one person's spending is another person's income, and that cycle repeats itself. So the multiplier equation... Um, is down here at the bottom and uh, we did this in class as well but it's this idea of uh, whenever you have a multiplier you plug that in and multiply it by the initial change in spending to get your end change in spending so that was a tool one of the main tools of this chapter and that's how those all fit together enjoy